Hey everybody, this is Grant, your friendly neighborhood OpenShift team member. Yesterday I created a video that shows how quick and easy it is to install OKD 3.10 on your local machine or on bare metal or a virtual machine. Now OKD is the community distri distribution of Kubernetes and it's also the upstream project that powers Red Hat OpenShift Container Platform. After I posted the video yesterday in the comments section, I got some requests to add a SSL certificate to the console. By default, when you install OKD, it uses a self-signed certificate. So what happens when you want to actually use a custom host name as well as a real certificate? So I'll put the link to that video showing how to install it in the description below. But today we're going to focus on installing that SSL certificate. Now I'm doing a lot of this by memory. I do not have this written down, so you'll have to bear with me if, as I go through this. So the first thing we want to do is open up our terminal window and increase the font size here a little bit so everyone can see it fine. Now if you recall from yesterday's video, the IP address was .14 on my local network. So I'm just going to SSH into that machine, it's 192.168.0.14, and I'm going to authenticate. And now that I'm on my OpenShift box, first thing I want to do is we see we have this install CentOS repository. That's what we used to install OKD yesterday. Now we're going to use CertBot uh, to generate a Let's Encrypt certificate. So the first thing we need to do is install CertBot. And that comes from the ePEL rep repository, which is on your system after you run through the install script, but that repository is probably disabled. So let's go ahead and look at our yum repos here. And we can see that we have the ePEL repo here. So let's go ahead and edit that. And sure enough, it was not enabled. So let's enable that by changing the zero to a one there. Save that, and now we want to do yum install certpot. This will take just a second. Now the way certbot works is it can stand up a temporary web server to ver verify or validate that you actually own and are on the system that has that host name. Now the problem with that is that we have already installed OpenShift, right? And so OpenShift is listening on port 80, port 8443, and port 443, if you remember from that video. So we actually need to make it to where OKD is not listening on those ports so that CertBot can stand up a temporary server to verify that um, identity. So to do that, let's see if I'm logged into my OKD cluster with the OC who am I command. I am. Let's see what project we're in. I'm in the project default. So let's look at our deployment configs. We have our router that is running in a state of one pod. So let's go ahead and scale that down. So we can say OC scale dash dash replicas equals zero. And we want to scale down the DC of the router. And we get a message saying that that has been scaled down. So let's verify that. So now nothing is listening on that port. So we can go ahead and run certbot. So we just type in certbot. And it's going to give us a message here saying that um, we can run it in cert only mode, which is what we want to do. Cert bot, cert only. So I'll hit enter there. And it's going to give me a few options here. I want to spin up a temporary web server, so I'm going to hit one. And then it's going to ask me for my email address, so I'll punch in my email address here. And let's see what is going on here. Terms and service. Let's agree to those. Do we want to share? No, I don't. Okay, so please enter the domain name. So the domain of my OKD web console is console.techdope.io. Hit enter there. And it's going to verify that um, I own that domain with that temporary web server. And if everything went correctly, we should see a congratulations message. And we do. Your certificate and chain have been saved at this directory. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and scale back up our router. Okay, so now the router is back up. Now, we need to change a few things in the install 
CentOS directory. When you ran this the first time, it created this inventory INI file with everything filled out based on the values that we entered in in the other video, like our um, domain name. And so you can see that, that the OpenShift public host name, for example, is configured to console.techdope.io. So I'm going to edit this file, and this is where I'm going to cheat just a little bit. I uh, have this written down in Visual Studio Code, so I'm going to paste this in, and then I will uh, cover it. All right, so let's uh, paste this in. So the first thing we add is OpenShift Master Overwrite Name Certificates. We set that to true since we're going to use our own certificate, and then we specify our certificates. The first is the cert file and CertBot placed the cert file for console.techdope.io in this directory named cert.pim. We also provide the key file, which is my private key, and then we add a name section to specify that this is for the console.techdope.io hostname. Okay, so we're going to save this. Now, if you recall, this install-openshift shell script actually just runs Ansible under the covers. And so to apply this SSL certificate to the existing OKD cluster installation that we have, I simply need to run Ansible. So what are the commands to do that? I'm just going to cat this install sh file and I'm going to grab for Ansible. And the two file or the two commands we want is this first one, right? Let's just go ahead and run the prerequisites again just to make sure everything's still good. And it's just going to go through and validate that I have everything on my system. Now, of course, we should because OpenShift is functioning properly on, on this node that I have it installed on. So we'll let this finish up. And then we're going to actually run the playbook that's actually going to replace the self-signed certificates with that custom uh, SSL cert that I got from Let's Encrypt. All right, so that has finished. We ran the prerequisites, so let's go ahead and cat that again, the install script, and now we want to run the deploy cluster playbook. Um, same thing we did during the install. So I'm gonna paste that in, and my keyboard uh, got stuck for a second. <laughs> it kept repeating the, uh, the enter key. All right, so it's going to go through and run through the deploy cluster playbook, and it's going to install that certificate that we created with CertBot and validated that's issued from Let's Encrypt. All right, everybody, I'm back. Sorry I lost track of time. As you can see, about uh, four hours have passed on this lovely Friday evening here, but I remembered I was recording a video. Um, so what I did is this finished up installing. Um, looks like everything was good. And then I went ahead and rebooted the box, okay? So you may want to do that. Um, also, during this install, I didn't even see that problem that I was mentioning earlier. Um, so you may or may not, if you do see it where it gets hung on waiting for the API server to come back up, um, just rerun the script and uh, everything should be working now. So let's go ahead and try this out. Um, let's open up a, a new tab and let's go to https colon slash slash console dot tech dope dot io colon 8443 and look at that ladies and gentlemen. Pow, Bob's your uncle. Okie dokie. Everything's looking great here. Um, so we can see we have a verified by Let's Encrypt here. So let's go ahead and look at the certificate. Console.techdope.io. Secure connection. And it's verified by Let's Encrypt. We can go ahead and look at this certificate. And we can see that this certificate was applied correctly. And now I will no longer get those uh, self-signed certificate warnings. So let's go ahead and log back in. She should leave password, password. And we can see that OpenShift is back up and running. Or sorry, OKD is back up and running. So anyway, that's how you apply a real certificate to your OpenShift slash OKD cluster. I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a good weekend, everybody.